and the target of the person was to touch my breast. Okay. So eventually, he, I thought I was very skillful and I escaped. Didn't know that that particular direction I escaped to, he was there. So he was able to touch. So that day, I came to... Hold on before you click on this video. What you're about to watch, about to watch is an interview between Apostle Arome Osai and the church member that experienced spiritual attacks from the uncle. The uncle, the uncle actually wanted to use her for money rituals. So after several things that happened in this video that you'll be hearing, you'll be hearing from Apostle Arome and the lady, it will definitely wake up your prayer life to understand the reason why we pray in the Holy Ghost, the essence of waking up at night to pray. And please watch this message all the way to the end. It will really change your life. Do not forget, do not forget to subscribe and turn your notification so that you can stay up to speed and we upload more videos. The reason we are using voiceovers is to make sure that we do not get copyright, copyright strikes on our video and specifically on our channel. God bless you. Are you willing to fight this night? I came to provoke you. You've been too quiet. And for those of you that are watching online, I know those of you in Canada, in the US, in Europe, might say, oh, this is the African gospel. You are wrong. Right there in New York. If you know the number of witches in New York, you will wake up. You will rise up. I have a gift. I can discern the atmosphere. The first time I, I came into London, the atmosphere was not good. Oh, you know when you do crusades, you know, atmosphere. So I knew that there was heavy witchcraft in London. Sister Hope, stand up. Look for a microphone, give her. Let me expose you to small warfare. Um, Hope, there are microphones here. Come, come, come. Come and sit here. Let me give you two testimonies. When we finish with Hope, we will... Call somebody up. I think I was in Lagos then. I was in Lagos then, Abby. And then she now calls me. I just came back from a, a, from walking offshore. Drained. The only thing that wasn't drained was my spirit. My spirit was was anointed. And I came back home. Then she calls me. I said, Pastor, I'm about to die. Can you give us a little background of that experience that you have? Um, I don't know where should I start exactly. <laughs> um, because I'll be running commentaries. She she has the experience, but she does not understand it. So me, I will be running commentaries to tell you the real meaning of what she's saying. Okay, give us a little background how you stayed with that your uncle, and then what happened. They they treated you, he treated you, and all of that. And then what now happened thereafter? Okay, praise God. Um, I think I lost my dad when I was 17 years old. You lost your dad when you were 17, yeah, 17 years, years old. Now, and is there anybody here that wants to lose his dad at 17? All right, but it happens. It's not something you're praying for, you're not expecting it, but in the life of some people it happens. The fact that it happened, does it mean that life has ended? Go on. Yeah, so after then, um, I think he met my mom and told my mom he was going to, even before that, when my dad died, he, they held a meeting, and in the meeting they said anyone who wants to school will go to school. Okay. So I, with that, I was called to Abuja. I think that then, then he had to send his driver from Abuja to just to pick me to Abuja. So he now owned up and said, I'm going to train this lady. She's going to become everything that God has ordained for her to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> go on. So at that, I was able to, he asked me to apply for, for the university I did, and I eventually got the admission immediately. And then, then while in school, I began to have strange encounters, strange experiences that I didn't understand. I think it was once when I saw his face. and it, She started having strange encounters, and she was in school, in a private school. You know, those, those schools are costly. Yes, sir. Okay. See, my... School fees is half a million. Okay, school fees half a million. So I, I was there when I was in 300 level. That was when I had the first experience now, in school. Now, see, I don't have time to teach us what we call, we call legal grounds. So if you don't know the language of warfare, you will embrace a serpent and say happy birthday. <laughs> By the grace of God, I have traveled wide. And everywhere I go, 
I meet ignorant believers. A pool of ignorant believers. And the modern Christianity, the modern Christianity in Africa is trying to take us away from warfare to make Christianity look intellectual. It's a Christianity of principles and keys. Not of discipleship, training and development. And so the last of our warriors are almost dead. So we have an infantile church that is growing that has not been exposed to the dynamics of warfare. As long as this young lady was under the authority of her biological father, these things didn't happen. But when a certain man who is a relative begins to invest in her life, a legal ground is created. And on the strength of that legal ground, some transactions can begin to take place. If that uncle or whatsoever never had the opportunity to give to her, that premise will never have been created. How many of you stayed sometime in your life with someone that was not your biological dad, mom? How many of you? Ah. Hallelujah. All right. Now, did she choose to go with this uncle? No. She wasn't even consulted. They held a meeting. I said, okay. And the result of the meeting was, come to Abuja. Go on. All right. I, I kept seeing those, ex uh, those things. I get to share with his wife. She'd been coming to me telling me she sees strange things. Her husband is doing strange things. He doesn't understand and all oh, that. Oh, she, she is even a sincere person. So he started giving you a hint that strange things are going on. I, at that point, I didn't believe her. Even with things, my because eyes... Because the love was too much. How do you look up and pay 500000 every semester, every session? And then, no, no, no. May the Lord give you understanding. The kingdom principle of warfare has already started. Because of this place where she was planted, the place is already rigged, it's already compromised. It has already activated warfare. Most times, believers are not sensitive. They don't know when to begin their war. Okay, go on. So after then, I, when I had the first experience, I think it was in a dream of the night first. And in that dream, I saw a man following me in an uncomputed your, building. Your, the, the mic is too close to your mouth. Give it some distance. Uh, speak into it. Speak into it. All right. I, and also, I was in a dream where I saw I was um, in an uncomputed building where someone was pursuing me. And then the target uh, of let, the let, person... No, stop there. Stop there. How many of you see people, think people you are being chased in, in dreams and... Don't do the hand like, like this. Where, it means you, the battle line was drawn some time ago, but because you were brainwashed, that things should be okay. You just say, no, no, no. Wake up. Me, things don't pursue me in the night. When I sleep in the night, I sleep because my body needs rest. Not for... <laughs> yes, go on. And the target of the person was to touch my breast. Okay. So eventually, he, I thought I was very skillful and I escaped. Didn't know that that particular direction I had skipped to, he was there. So he was able to touch. So that day, I came to the church chapel. Where to, we had a, a, a concert. And while I worshipped, I felt the presence of God so strange and I felt something was lifted. Lifted from yes. where they touched. Yes. See, so after then. Warfare, warfare. Part of your spiritual warfare, part of the tools of warfare is in-depth worship because in in-depth worship you lose sight of yourself and god becomes magnified under that atmosphere yokes break so that was warfare that took place there her worship stirred up the jealousy of god and that jealousy moved god to break that yoke she was she, she wasn't aware she was in warfare she just felt she went and had powerful worship and something happened and she didn't probe to find out what it was. Go on. So that same day when I left the chapel, I was going to the hostel. Maybe I stepped my leg at the hostel door. I felt like an arrow. Arrow. Yeah. Because things that are thrown at you through witchcraft, if it breaks, the people that threw it, there's a signal, there's a control room, there's a barometer that will give a reading that, ah, broken, 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 broken. So the people will, the average believer doesn't like war. It was chosen for you. I know you don't like war, but 
Let me not tell you too much. Don't worry. You are already in war. I'm seeing war, war around. If God gives us grace, I will prove it to you. Yes? So I... That was the beginning of a very strange headache that I... So the arrow was the beginning of a strange headache. I couldn't make my hair. She couldn't make her hair anymore. I, I was on low cut throughout till I graduated. Low cut. You will, you will see how a low cut you think is the fashion. But the low cut it was, it was actually a, a, a sign of a body. So it began to affect my study life. I couldn't read anymore. Her mental capacity was being drained. Oh, times I get to the exam hall, I can't remember what I've read. Totally blank. Those are demons that pick people's thoughts and the things you have stored in your soul. They can pick it up. Look, actually, God was merciful such that um, there was none of my exams that I had a failure. And in most of them that had um, strange experiences like that, I get to have an A. And this is what normally happens. When I'm in the exam hall, I will hear a voice speaking to me, telling me things I, I had forgotten. And at times, it looked like my book was given to me in the exam hall. I flipped through. So we have two things happening here. The attack was still active, but the Holy Spirit was there and was also playing a role. Until that moment, she didn't know she was at war. I deliberately, when I read through this uh, parable today, I deliberately decided that I'm going to stop, punctuate at the warfare focal point so that I can digress to teach us warfare. The headache became so tense. So the headache was growing. And affected my vision. I, my eyes were swollen for him. Affected her vision. So I had to call his wife. And she, he sent the car to come and pick me from school. When she came and picked me, I went Meanwhile, home. the man that is responsible will send a car to come and pick her. She was being treated like a, a honorable. But her blood was paying. So it was with her blood. And as long as that premise is established, access is possible. Yes, go on. So he asked his wife to take him to the hospital. I think a friend's hospital, private hospital. When I got there, the man ran some tests and he said it's malaria. And malaria. It's malaria. So if they, you are a victim of warfare, most of the time doctors don't see what is wrong with you. And if they make a prescription, most of the time it is wrong. And if the prescription requires a surgery, just... Re <laughs> In fact, if, if a doctor tells you it is surgery, come back to me. Come, come to me. We have to investigate it. Because it, most surgeries are not... They are, they, are, they, are, they are part of the whole manipulation program. Yes? When I got to... He gave me a drug. I came. I was fine. I was getting well at the time. And, but I was losing strength. So the wife was like, ah, no, are you sure you're not going to check with the pharmacist this drug? So when I went to the woman, she saw the drug and she screamed. And she was like, who is this wicked doctor that gave you this particular drug that wants to kill you? Can you see the man manipulation? You went to the doctor hoping to receive help? <laughs> All right. So when I came, she had to change the drug. And that was how I was able to go to school. But before then, I, when I was there, he came with a drug that does not have any right top on top. It was plain. I took one. Before I knew his wife followed me and said, no, she doesn't have peace. I shouldn't take this drug. I shouldn't take this drug. Is it the, the man himself that gave you the drug? Yes. So the man now is a doctor. And he administers... <laughs> and I know Now, do you realize... That all these things are happening because she was planted somewhere. Early in the morning, he comes and he opens the door slowly. To check Every morning, he will come and open the, the door. So I like this. I didn't. I didn't even understand that this was this was it. it. Was when I began to really when I was growing it and I understood the meaning of it. He was trying to come and check whether she's gone or something. When so they I, shoot the arrows from where they shoot it, they come to check you early in the morning to see if it if the thing hit the target. Meanwhile, she was still ignorant about the warfare. So all this one happening now is just the grace of God. And you see, the average believer doesn't prepare for warfare because they think it's an alternative. They think it's, you can decide not to choose it. This war I'm talking about is not a war you choose. It's a war that chooses you. It is because you were planted. That's why the devil became interested about the space and planted somebody there so that there will be consistent warfare. Everybody goes into marriage expecting 
we'll, on Monday we'll wear blue, Tuesday we'll wear green, and then we'll come with the face cap like this. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> By the time you, you arrive, you will find people calling Satan. Satan will hang on the wall and be speaking to them. <laughs> ah, it's been long ago. Where did you people bring this woman from? Your case will be discussed in strange quarters. Jump, jump, jump in this story. Go to the time that you, that you called me. What was the experience at that time? Okay, then I, I, I was praying in the night when I saw two different groups holding a meeting. The first group was saying um, if that this spiritual height I'm trying to attain is not possible. They don't that was it. when she came to the tent here. And, they and became very serious with the Lord. And began to gain spiritual momentum. The fact that she was gaining spiritual momentum was a challenge somewhere. I said, hey, if this person should prosper in this journey, you don't know now. And that's why a lot of things will be thrown at you. You will not say, hey, that. You will not say, I'm a bad man. Me, that me, I'm, you have a problem with me. I say, is it, is it? you don't know <laughs> that you are a victim. May the Lord help you. Okay. Well. Then um, I, the second group was saying, if they you allow see, me to you see, leave. You see, you see, the angel of the Lord has come. It means somebody is in trouble. One of us is in trouble. Yes, go on. And then he said, um, they said, if they allow me, they won't have entrance to if my they, family. If they allow her to grow. So they have to kill me. They won't have entrance, so let them kill her. So uh, that night, I think a few days or a few weeks, and someone came with a syringe. Came with a syringe? Down to struggle over the syringe. I thought I had escaped the person. The person uh, mistakenly... Uh, the person injected her. And then since then, my life was never the same. She I was just drifting to, in and out of her body. I and called to, me. I I'm dying. I lose touch with this realm. So was, it doesn't matter whether she eats or not. If you are drifting like that, your food will not... Do you understand? You, you can eat, oh. But you have not eaten. The spirit started drifting in and out. She's the second case I've met in that, second person I've met with that case. Yes, go on. I, I began to lose touch with this realm. One night we had to go for prayers in Pastor Shala's house. That night, I think we were sleeping, waiting for 12 to, to, to be 12, 12 for us 12 to, midnight. to start praying. Around 11, I was sleeping, Mercy and some ladies were there and then eventually i saw my body on the bed the spirit had gone and my spirit was standing then and i heard mercy's voice saying she calls me mama she said mama will you allow yourself to go just like that meanwhile she was sleeping everywhere everybody was sleeping and then i just shouted jesus then and i went back to my body that so she shouted time. jesus and went back to her body you would have had a corpse in your hands warfare is that Mortars know nothing about. When I went to Joss, it became tense. Fear began to come on me. Once it's evening like this, she's afraid of. I'm afraid of the night. I will Something else down. switches on. I will pick my phone and start selecting pictures for my burial. Delete all those pictures. Delete them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the level I got to, and then I when. The last, when I had the last prayer we prayed in the night, that was when I said, Kai, let me open up to daddy. I chatted him up and he responded immediately and he called me and prayed for me. After the prayer, it looked like I was, in fact, I was going, I was panting, I was grasping for air. Hmm. And then I, I just, my, one of my sisters was there, she was, one of my sisters was there and I sat, I was just, I managed to call his name. When she heard his name, she knew I wanted to talk to him. So she went to my phone and dialed his number, put it on speaker. I was, so when he heard my voice, he said, Grace, where are you going to come back here? Come back here. That was how I became, I got myself. And then after that same prayer, that was when I began to see it came to me, it was like a bird. It came in a ring and the bird was crying. Was saying, Hope, we need your blood, and it has to be your blood. It must be your blood. It must be your blood. It must be your blood. And I are was you, telling Are you convinced now? Rise up, let's pray. Ah. 
Ama ya kuria barakos esima. Uza za mekuria seliko tamro. Have you been experiencing strange things? It's time to fight. It's time to fight. Have you been seeing your spirit leaving your body? When will you rebel against the devil? When will you rebel against Satan? Thank you. 